a couple of crazy things I thought of. I mean, it's not like anybody would ever do anything like that. Okay? Uh, I mean, you know, it's not like personalized Google ads or anything like that would ever happen, right? What if they could check if you're angry? What if they could check if you're sad? What if they could check if you're doing something inappropriate in front of the camera? You know, what, what if Clippy could pop up and say, I see you're trying to watch porn. Would you like an ad for Vaseline intensive hand cream? <laughs> Not appropriate. I mean, this, I don't want them seeing this stuff. Not that I ever do that. But actually, what's guaranteed, this is actually already in place, there's companies that do time tracking by face. So remember how you used to be able to have your friend clock you in and you'd actually sleep an hour late? You know, because the, 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 you know, the whatever system from ADP or whatever system would just do your time code, your number? And so your buddy would clock you in and you'd clock him in next week. So each of you would get an, uh, an hour extra sleep each week, right? Or every other week? Not anymore. First they went to fingerprints, now they're going to go to your face. They're actually going to see if you're there. But, you know, could you hold up your trusty balloon? You probably could. So I talked about fact, fiction, and fuck ups. I deal with the CSI effect all the time. I hate this freaking thing. The magical formula, magnify, enhance, enhance, get them, doesn't work, okay? Please, everybody try the demo. It's awesome stuff. It's here all week. No, just kidding. Uh, in every freaking TV show I watch, they're like, hey, video IQ him on Las Vegas. They, everybody thinks it's 100% accurate, 100% reliable. It's as scientific as everything. You know, ballistics, fingerprints, forensic odontology, that's bite marks if you didn't know. Uh, it, it is. It's just as accurate as them because they're not accurate at all. Uh, hint, if you're ever in a court case where you have a ballistics issue, uh, pick up this book. Okay? Yes, it is, Al. So, tainting evidence and basically this is about how the FBI labs suck. And I'm not dissing the FBI labs, I think they're awesome places, but their facial recognition as a science is being taken way too seriously. And I'll explain that in a second. But just as a lot of sciences out there are absolutely perfect because the FBI says they are, because this agency says they are, they're not. All right? We found that in a lot of the nation's crime labs, they do not have a scientific underpinning. <laughs> Nicely done. If you can kill that demo and it's the pit patch, oh, there we go, never mind. Okay. In a lot of the nation's crime labs, actually in all the nation's crime labs, the scientific underpinnings of a lot of forensic science is found wanting and it just, it, it sucks. There's actually a book from the National Academy of Sciences. They did a full uh, uh, scientific examination of all these different forensic sciences and there's no scientific underpinning for ballistics, forensic odontology, bite mark evidence. Uh, there's actually very little for fingerprints. Uh, there, there, there's a lot of problems with these things but everybody thinks it's pretty, it's blinking lights, therefore it's science, therefore it's infallible. This is fiction, okay? Keep that in mind. It is fiction. It's not true, okay? This is the fiction behind facial recognition, behind a lot of the forensic sciences out there. They're not there. There's no scientific underpinnings. Something you have to be careful of. Uh, this one is a guy named Brandon Mayfield, a lawyer from Portland, who was wrongly arrested about a terrorist bombing uh, because the FBI said, these are his fingerprints. This was done in Spain. The Spanish authorities went, no, it's not. The Spanish authorities had to convince the FBI it was different fingerprints. I mean, come on, guys. Give me a break. There's, there's all kinds of forensic issues. I'm not going to get into it. Now, now, sometimes, admittedly, you don't need forensics. This guy was this dumb. He saw a video surveillance video on TV, excuse me, a surveillance video on TV, and calls up and goes, dude, why am I in that? No forensics needed, we're done, slam bam, okay? But most of the time, the police are just not that lucky. Now again, in my sky talk in about 20 minutes or so, I'm going to be going over the legalities of using your face in a, in a uh, police investigation. We can talk about that in a bit, but I'm going to give it up for the minute. Let's talk about fucking it up, all right? How can you screw it up? Well, there's several ways. So for face detection, there's something called CV Dazzle. This is again that gentleman named Adam Harvey I talked about a little while ago, AH Projects, awesome dude. He actually went in and did all kinds of different makeup to see if he could get the patterns, the pattern recognition of face detection all screwed up. 
okay? You'll see the, all the different patterns he's got on there and at the top are the ones that seem to work and at the bottoms with the red boxes are the ones that absolutely didn't work. My guess is that the ones that didn't work and I'm still working on this, it's kind of interesting, I'm trying different pixel masks but uh, the ones that didn't work are too regular, okay? It's a pattern recognition algorithm. If you give it a pattern, it likes patterns but sometimes even the regular ones work. This is actually what worked. You'll notice at the top, this is his actual CV Dazzle. I talked to him, he's cool with it. Uh, at the top, the CV Dazzle makeup is, you see the, the, the hair coming down to cover the bridge of the nose? That's important. It breaks that line. They're, they're, the, the facial detection program is expecting a light band, your forehead, in between your hair, or in my case what used to be hair, and your nose, the bridge of your nose. He broke that line with a, with a hair coming straight down to the bridge of the nose and then the makeup breaks up the light and the dark contours of the cheekbones. Now he said to himself, he goes, look, this is only useful if you're going clubbing. But if you're going clubbing, it's a great way not to get in trouble if something happens. Okay? So I'm not advocating you commit crimes. Dear God. But <laughs> what I'm saying is this is an interesting feature or, or set of features that can be used to obscure your face and actually it won't even realize there's a face there. That's the point, okay? So there are other things you can do but they're a little extreme. Okay? Uh, this is that guy again who painted his, face, painted his face every day for a year. Kind of funny stuff but irrespectively, I'm not going to walk around the streets with makeup like that on unless you feed me a lot of alcohol and pay me lots of money. Or it's DEF CON. Anyway, but I'm sure that we've all seen people wearing interesting makeup. Uh, this is a little outre but it's okay. But let's talk about how to fuck up facial recognition. This is face detection we've just fucked up, okay? Remember CV Dazzle, all right? And this will actually not let your face be seen. And if you drew this on a piece of paper or drew this on your face with the markers, hint, hint, I was asking you to. If you haven't done the demo, by the way, it's still running. There's a full commercial grade face detection demo. Please feel free to come on up and play with it. I brought markers, paper and balloons. See if you can screw with it. It's there for you to screw with. Please do so. Uh, but let's get back to fucking it up. I love that. This is from faceresearch.org and I've got a couple others I'll drag up. I don't have time to put them on slides. But look at these two faces. Are these the same face? Seriously, are these the same people? No. A facial recognition program couldn't tell that. Unless it has, a lot of facial recognition programs bring you to black and white, okay? Unless it's doing shades, which obviously they're different shades of skin, it won't be able to tell. There's no vector between them. Do you see the dots in between? That's a vector diagram. What are the changes between these two faces? It couldn't be able to tell. It's that close. Are these two people I picked carefully out of a Google image search after hundreds of hours, sweat, blood and tears? No, they're the freaking sample images in face research. They're two random freaking girls and it couldn't tell the difference. It's really, really difficult in facial recognition to tell the difference between two faces. Okay? Uh, time check? Awesome. Okay, so it's really different to tell to <laughs> It's really difficult for it to tell the difference between two faces in a database. So it's really easy to screw with facial recognition. I have hair. It's really ugly hair. And it's a big God's ugly hat. But it'll screw with the facial recognition database. Could a person tell it apart? Yes, a person would look at me and go, oh my God, what are you doing? Because it's that ugly. But a machine can't. Remember, machines are the smartest dumb things you'll ever know. They'll do exactly what we tell them to. All right. So here's the real fuck ups. In 2001, Tampa installed facial recognition. They didn't find a single person. They put their entire fugitive database in it. They put their entire warrant database in it. They put their entire prison database in it. As in, hey, let's see if Schmuck who committed a murder three years ago is out on the streets at a bar getting drunk waving a gun around. They didn't find a single effing person. Okay? They scrapped it. All right? The public found out about it. They were wearing masks and doing this to the cam you well, read between the lines, to the cameras. And so they couldn't get a clear enough shot to identify anyone. Now that's almost 10 years ago. The cameras get a lot better since then, right? Yeah, they do. But if you want to talk about video systems, that's also my expertise, they don't do that much better. 
because nobody wants to buy 40 million terabytes of storage to store the frickin' video. So realistically, we're still stuck with about five to 10-year-old surveillance technology and it doesn't work. It just doesn't work. At Boston's Logan Airport, anybody ever here, here fly through Boston? Big flipping airport, right? Okay. They ran two separate tests of facial recognition systems using volunteers. They enrolled the volunteers. They had full frontal shots. They had side shots. They had the other side shots. They had back of the head shots. They had volunteers enroll in the system and they only had a 60% effectiveness rate. Dear God, that's horrible. That means that that fleeting camera image you got of the, the terrorist, you know, running by the camera and you got this effectively or this, it can't find you. It can't see him. It can't actually tell if there's a face there and it cannot determine whether that face is in the database. So with enrolled volunteers, they had a 61.4% accuracy rate, leading the airport officials to pursue other security options. What a surprise. So what's the reality? I said facts, fictions, and fuck ups. What's the reality about face detection, face tracking, and facial recognition? Face detection, pretty awesome. Who here played with the demo? Who here thinks it's pretty good actually? All right. Anybody think it sucks? It's a horrible program. It, it doesn't work at all? Did you play with it? Then you can't say that. Go up and play with it. Get up. Come on. Ugh. So if you play with a demo, they're pretty good. Oh, that's good. You got to enlarge it though, please. The demo is pretty good. So face detection, pretty good. It'll find a face. You can mask it. You can do all sorts of weird makeup, the CV dazzle stuff. But face detection works pretty well. Give them credit. Face tracking, continuous face detection. It works pretty well. Just leave that one alone. Facial recognition sucks. It sucks. All right? They run, uh, the FBI ran facial recognition on the entire North Carolina DMV database. They trumpeted that they found a fugitive. It was actually, as I understand it, an FBI agent who was watching it as it goes by and went, wait! Which is the best face recognition technology there is, but not exactly scalable. <laughs> okay? They found one guy. That's pitiful. All right? So realistically, even though everybody goes, oh my God, they're coming after me? They're not. Okay? It's not a problem. At this point, it's not something you have to worry about. The only thing you have to worry about is are, am I getting put in the database? Am I getting put in for later processing? Am I getting put in some massive database, real ID? There's all sorts of different ones you know about and I know about and we can discuss for hours, but you get the idea. So if you're getting put in these databases, will you later get found? Will you later get charged? Will you later get put in federal pound your ass prison? I don't know. This is something you've got to worry about. I discuss how to keep your face out of the databases in my next talk in the Skybox. You're welcome to come along with me. I'm not going to have a Q&A today because I've got to run to the Skybox. I think I've got, what, 10, 15 minutes left? 15 minutes left. I'm going to stop in case we have any questions. I have a couple of things I can talk about, but I'd like to stop and get some questions and see what questions you have about uh, facial recognition, face tracking, face detection. So please, let's stop. I, I know it's a little unusual. I apologize, but raise your hand or stand up and shout. Please. You're in the casino databases. That's where all the stuff started. Yes and no. Uh, casino databases are a big thing. They have what they call the black book, the band book. Uh, you know, you're a card counter. Get the hell out. You know, GTFO. What the hell are you doing here? Blah blah blah. Right? Yes and no. The casinos run black books. The casinos, and you've all seen the show Las Vegas. Video IQ him, and 16 tenths of a second later, they found every place he's been in the last like five months. He's he's been he was here six months ago, boss. Bullshit. Okay? Yes, they can do that. Facial recognition systems at the casinos are some of the best in the world. Again, 60 to 70% uh, correct find rate or a, a, a correct positive rate. Um, and remember, vi uh, casinos, according to Nevada Gaming Commission law, because I've put Las Vegas casino systems in, they only hold video for 30 days. They can hold your face forever, but they only hold video for 30 days. If you imagine how many cameras this room has, now imagine that each of them is streaming at uh, let's say 5 or 10 megabits per second to a storage. Do you know the stack of chassis you need for storage for 30 days? For just this room? It's not small and it's not cheap. Casinos are on budgets just like everybody else. Yes, you give them all your money. I know. But that, that money aggregated among everybody is not as much as you think. They're on budgets for, the, for their surveillance systems. So their surveillance systems and their facial recognition systems are 
you know, not as expansive.